All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to today's video. And today is the third installment in our carbon fiber filament printing series. Um, and today we'll be doing P-A-H-T-C-F. Man, that's a mouthful, but we'll get, we'll get past all of that, okay? Um, when I first bought my Bamboo X1, it came with a sample roll of normal P-A-C-F filament. And I actually bought an extra roll of that PACF filament. And you guys have seen it in all of the Nimitz Benchies that I printed. All of the CF that I printed there is the PACF that they printed, that they had at the time. And at the time that I ordered that, that was the only one that was available. But since then, as we've learned, they've come out with several different ones. But they actually don't offer the PACF anymore. It's only the PAHT. CF that they offer. So we'll go ahead and go through the steps of printing with that and look at the kind of differences between the PACF and the PAHT CF. And as a reminder, we'll be printing a little drone frame. I have an old iFlight drone that I broke several times. I have plenty of replacement frames. That's not very fun. I thought it would be cool to test out uh, the carbon fiber filaments on a little drone frame and see if we can actually make one fly. So before all of you run out there and try to build a five inch drone with carbon fiber filament, let's see if we can get this little guy going uh, first. The second reminder is the AMS compatibility. Um, so with that, I'm following what the product page says on that because the product, uh, uh, the products for carbon fiber filament are fairly new on the filament page for bamboo. So the PAHTCF, the PET, the PETG, and the PLA are all new carbon fiber filaments. So all of them have a product page and have recommendations for drying as well as uh, AMS compatibility. So I'll be using the AMS on this one as well because it does say that it's compatible. And again, if you're not comfortable with that, do what you feel you're comfortable with. I'll make some comments about that along the way. So if all that sounds good, then sit back and relax. Let's print some more carbon fiber filament. Let me get everything set up. All right, so here we are on the filament page and we'll see right at the top are all of the carbon fiber filaments in there. We've already tested out the PETG, the PLA. Today we'll be doing the PAHT and next week we'll be doing the PETCF as well. What we don't see on here, as I mentioned before, is just the normal PACF. It's not loaded in here anymore, so I guess the HT is replacing it, so let's take a look at that. And I think the HT stands for high temperature, could stand for high tensile as well, that's referenced in here, but I think that's the high temperature there. And um, we'll see that dry out before use, so we'll go over that today. AMS compatible, we'll be looking at that as well. And then we'll see some differences between um, wet and dry state and the amount of deflection. And this is compared between the old PACF and the new PAHTCF here. We'll see some more differences listed out here. I'll let you go through all of those. We'll also see the differences between the old and the new. All right, so let's get that going. Set up so we can dry the filament. So we'll go over here to these little settings. And the first time you go here, it may be on temperature and axis. We need to go to utilities, dry filament. And today we will be doing PACF, but the high temperature one, which is this one. So let's go ahead and get this prepared. All right, so it's complete. So let's go ahead and hit confirm. And for this, we need 80 degrees is what it says on the box for eight to 12 hours. Again, I'm gonna do the minimum on that. So let's get the filament loaded and then we'll hit the start button. All right, so here's the PAHTCF in its roll. 
And it does say on the box that this roll can handle up to 90C. Um, but again, it also says 80C for eight to 12 hours. Um, so we're gonna do that. All right, so the two ways that we can cover this are again with an old box. You can just set it over there like so. But I have printed out the PC cover and you can print this out of a high temp material. I think it recommends PA, HT, CF, or this PC. I happen to have the PC. So I went ahead and did that. So we're gonna cover that out. And then we'll hit the start button. All right, so we have everything set here, 80 degrees for eight hours. And we'll go ahead and hit start. See you in eight hours. All right, so now that the drying is done, we'll go ahead and hit confirm. And then we'll get this loaded in the AMS. All right, so we'll get the PLA CF out of here from last week's video. And now that the PAHTCF is ready to go into the AMS, we'll go ahead and get it loaded. And I'll see you in the slicer. All right, so here we are back in the slicer and we'll see that we still have everything set up for the PLACF. And just like I showed in the last video, how we'll update that since we just loaded slot eight here with the PAHTCF, we'll just hit the sync button, hit the resync button. And now that we'll see that it's changed over to that, we'll also see that the flow ratio, the temperatures for the nozzle, We'll see that we cannot use the cool plate on this one. Um, and it shows all of the uh, temperatures for uh, each of the different plates. We'll be using the high temp plate today and you'll see it's 100 degrees uh, Celsius for that. We'll see the volumetric speed way down from any of the other ones. Um, the other thing that you'll notice is I'll have the 0.6 nozzle on here with the rougher filaments. Um, in the wiki, it did recommend that. These are the newer filaments and they do say 0.4. Um, I did try the PACF in the 0.4 nozzle, which it did work. But when I tried to run other filaments through the nozzle, it seemed to um, kind of clog the end of the nozzle up and wouldn't let other filaments through there. So that's why I've been running the 0.6 nozzle on all of these tests. Uh, maybe on whichever one we think is the best at the end of these tests, uh, maybe I'll run a 0.4 millimeter test just on that one, and we'll see if that does anything for the strength of it. Um, but I have everything set on number eight already, so whenever we switched that, that also switched these filaments up here. We'll go through the rest of the settings here. We don't need a brim. We don't need support. Everything else, the 0.6 nozzle, 0.3 millimeter, everything else, we're gonna leave the same. So let's go ahead and slice it. One hour and one minute. So that's about 15 minutes longer than the others. But again, um, the reason that we know that is if you look at my ludicrous video, um, I kind of highlighted that this is the one setting that will change the speed of everything without having to change all of the other stuff. Um, so you can see that Bamboo's also using that one setting to do that as well. And you'll see the effect is a slower print time right there. So by about 15 uh, minutes. But we will see it's only 18 grams versus I think the 21 and 22 grams of the previous ones. Um, so we'll go ahead and let this print. And I'll see you when it gets done. Now that the print is done. Let's take a look at what it looks like. All right, so this one looks very shiny too, but I will say this one, no errors on this piece right there. And this looks like the best quality print so far. So let's take it out and look at it a little bit. All right, so let's take it off of the frame. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's way better. Way more rigid looks a lot better let's check this one still a little flimsy 
but not as bad. Hey, I'll tell you, this one is the front runner in my vote. You guys will vote on the final one. But so far, this one's been the best quality. Oh, yeah, easily. Yeah, I think uh, we could probably make that one work. Yeah, with that 0.6 millimeter, no gaps. Looks really, really good. If we remember from the PLA one. But we'll do a detailed review going over each one of them. But looks pretty good.